Okay, we are getting ready to do the next step on the build of this 38 Zephyr. And the next step, as I'll have JB explain, is all about getting the undercarriage put together. And that's pretty complicated with the chassis and suspension and driveline components that all have to fit perfectly. So uh, JB, I'm gonna let you explain what's going on here. Okay, so somewhere along the way, someone put hydraulics or started to. I yeah, guess. they started to, because there's no, we checked there's no um, master cylinder in it. So they didn't get very far in the process. Also, this, this shock is clearly stuck. Okay. So it's gonna have to come off and we're gonna put new shocks on it. These knee action shocks actually work pretty well. Okay. But you but you want a brand new one. Do not invest in rebuilding an old shock. It's a, a lot of a lot of money for what? I, I couldn't tell you. They sell brand new shocks for a fraction of what it costs to restore one. Okay. So just put new ones in. We're gonna have an all new rear end. Nothing is salvaged um, off of an old car because it costs way more time and money to fix something than it does just to replace it. Okay. Especially if you're upgrading it at the same time. So, so again, we're starting at we're looking right now at the back, but this That's is going to all this is going to be gone. Everything, and then our new nine-inch rear end, and all, and the new hubs, new axles, everything that is, that is made to be exactly the same width as the stock. Yep. That whole rear end had to be built to fit exactly in here because we have no space between the outside of the tire and the and the skirt. Oh right. The so I can't have any. I can't have any deviations right, on that. It's got to be, be exactly out, right. I can't be too far in. So it's very critical that we repeat that dimension. And when the axle tubes and the axles were made, yeah. they had to be made exactly the, the right width to accommodate that. So gotcha. now that's all been done and that's here. Finally, most of the parts are here. The ladder bars are here, the cross bars are here. So all this stuff's been dribbling in and now I think most of it's here. So Mark wants to get all this old stuff out of there and start putting the new stuff in. Okay, JB, uh, looks like you got a pretty good uh, amount of parts laid out here. What's happening? We finally got a uh, complete assemblage of the rear end portion of the car, which of course we're going to be changing out to a more modern system. Uh, principal reason being that we want to maintain as much of the original car as we can. So we've maintained the original spring and uh, we're going to Take out, just take out a couple of leaves, which will in turn make the spring less powerful, allow the car to come down a couple of inches, but that we don't have to do any radical lowering and we don't want to do it because we want the car to go, only go down two or three inches. Right. Gives it a better look without being vulnerable to scraping it on curbs and that sort of thing. That's the spring. Now the spring is going to be uh, reattached to the car once the leaves are, are removed. Okay. And you see the spring eyes are at the end of, of the spring that's how it relates to the rear end. So the entire affair is being held by virtue of the spring to, the, to these, these perches and then to the body. I okay, see. and now the entire rear end is now free to float, but we have to maintain ge geometric control of it because if it's just out there without these control bars or ladder bars, as they're referred to, then uh, the, the rear end isn't stable. And so we have, to, we have to integrate these and they have to be long enough to be able to control the, the, uh, the, the, the up and down movement of the axle. But if you notice, we have heim joints here uh, and that's how the, uh, it's allowed to pivot, but it's not allowed to drop or go out of control. So this is a very sophisticated, uh, modern system. It was originally, uh, designed for a race car situation. And of course in race cars, you got huge horsepower, uh, very high speeds and a lot of danger going on. So we wanna make sure that this is a safe system. That's not just some cobbled together thing. Mark Richler, our, our uh, chassis builder has, been, has probably built hundreds of chassis. Uh, I'm sure he's built hundreds of chassis actually. And uh, he's the one that designed this system for us and uh, he's gonna be putting it together and installing it uh, he's right at the moment uh, removing some of the stock stuff that gets in the way, but as we go along, I'll explain uh, each 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 part of this system and what its role is. Okay, okay we got the rear end housing. That's what houses the the third member or the rear end. Right. If you notice on the front of the rear end, it has this shackle, which in turn will be attached to the drive shaft. The drive shaft moves through this area. This loop is made 
to get out of its way, out of the drive shaft's way, at the same time to maintain control of the drive shaft. If it were to break or a bearing would give up, it's simply going to drop into this loop so that the car is not completely upset. Gotcha. That's a safety measure, and this absolutely has to be here. Uh, this particular assemblage we buy, th these we, we have made for us. Uh, the axle tubes come this way uh, according to our design and the width of the individual car we're working on. Okay. Uh, over here we have the, the brake calipers, which everybody's familiar with. The, we have the, uh, the brake assembly, which is a disc brake. You notice the size of the caliper on this, on this brake is, mm -hmm. is very large, and that's because we want a lot of pressure. We want to be able to stop this car. It's not a lightweight car. It weighs a lot, and it needs a lot of brake to stop it. Yep. Okay, so we got the disc brakes. These are commonly available. Uh, as time progresses, these can be replaced by standard replacements, and uh, all of these numbers and all of these applications will be provided to the owner so that he knows where to get anything and everything for the car in the event that these, these wear out, if the shoes wear out, uh, if anything wears out, this is all commonly available uh, type of uh, equipment that you can get anywhere and everywhere. Okay. This is an adapter that goes between <clears throat> the outside of this brake, brake assembly uh, to allow us to go from a smaller bolt pattern to the wide five pattern because this, as you notice, the wide five has mm -hmm. a bolt pattern much wider than a standard bolt pattern. So we want to put this adapter on here uh, such that it allows that wheel to be bolted on because this is a 38 and we want to maintain the 38. I always look. wondered how you did that. Yep. Okay. That's Most of these cool. things were developed by hot rodders and race car people over the millennia and uh, a lot of it's based on performance but, and a lot of it's based on safety because when you introduce more horsepower to a car uh, higher speeds, then of course the danger increases exponentially. So we want to make sure that when you change something out, you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're not just uh, changing out a part of it and not the rest of it. That's part of the problem I see in some of these amateur systems is that they really don't understand the geometry of the cars. Uh, they don't have the, the, the backdrop that we have in terms of race cars and, and that sort of thing. So. Um, this is a product of lots and lots of years and lots and lots of builds mm -hmm. to uh, build a safe system that accommodates a car uh, and changes it out to disc brakes, which are, you know, in this case are hydraulic because remember the 38 didn't come with hydraulic brakes. Sure. We're mm -hmm. going to have to introduce a, a new cross member in there to accommodate the, the, uh, the, the, di the new disc brake hydraulic system, which means, that, of course, it was never present in a 38. So we're going to take... The, uh, s mimic the materials that came in the 39 because they're mo most closely uh, come to what we want. In some cases, we'll actually use 39 parts mm -hmm. uh, to facilitate uh, the construction and to push things along as long as we have that stuff. Uh, okay. we'll, we'll be able to integrate it into uh, like a 38 that was trying to get uh, hydraulic brakes with, with disc brakes. This car is going to be equipped with four-wheel disc brakes, so we're going to use a different system in the front end. And, when we get to that stage of the build, we'll be doing uh, an explanation of that as well. All right, one last thing. I'm just wondering, can you tell me how this front cross member piece, how that attaches? Okay, this, this is uh, a little bit long for, because it's a universal piece. So <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna fit the whole rear end up into the car, build plates in, to, in, in alongside the frame, which runs about right here. Okay. And then those plates will be cut and fitted and then this will be welded and those plates will be welded okay. to the, the frame because this is a, a, takes a lot of torque. Right. Uh, this cannot simply be welded to some little wimpy tube. Sure. It has to be welded to a plate, which in turn is, okay. is welded to the chassis. So you've got a really firm hold on this thing because if this thing were to fall out, it would not be good. Yeah. So, so obviously we have to do it that way. Obviously, once it's put in place, it's there forever. Right. And we don't want to bolt it in because bolts come loose, sure. bolts break. Uh, yep. I, I asked about that myself. And ordinarily, when you put something in, you always bolt it. You might use grade eight bolts and, and things that are pretty much uh, not susceptible to breakage. But in this case, it is a safety concern that this most definitely has to be welded into the chassis uh, for safety's sake. And in every way, it's safer, better. It, it'll help the car stop more quickly. Uh, the mm. parts are readily available. We don't have to worry about a 38 rear end uh, gear ratio that you can't find anymore. 
Right. So that's one of the reasons that these subtle kind of safety related and performance related things can be done uh, and do not detract from the value of the car because it actually makes the car more usable, not less usable. So right. if you become a slave to originality, uh, you forget that those these cars actually have to be driven. I drive a 38 every day. I drove one this morning. Yeah. And it has limitations that this car simply will not have. Uh, I, I had some a near near miss that we might have talked about mm -hmm. uh, where, uh, you know, if another eighth of an inch or another foot, I, I probably wouldn't be having this this discussion, but wow. um, that told me that that probably as soon as I can, the customers' cars are uh, are taken care of, which are always first priority. That maybe at some point I'd like to get my 38 in here and do this very same thing. Right on. Very okay. good. Well, okay. thanks, JB. That's great. Yep.